I appreciate what Brother David said. And I appreciate um, Sister Tina, what you said about the prayer. I hear you. God's speaking to me the same way. Amen. And so tonight, I want to share from the Word of God. And uh, God, I just really want us to pray. I just feel like that's where God's calling, and that's what God's doing. Um, see what it'll do for us with the Word. Let me just kind of share a few moments from my heart. Um, just let me remind you, Tuesday evening, try to be faithful, be at church. Um, not because it's my family, but because someone special is coming to preach. And uh, we sure want folks to come out and be blessed by that. Uh, but Brother Clay come, was sharing that fellowship meeting on Friday night. And, uh, you know, his ministry, for those who know Brother Clay Cub, he's a, he's a teacher to pastors and those who are missionaries. And so, you know, he's a, he's a very, on my opinion, he's a very deep level thought person. Uh, he, he shares, sit back, he's not going to be done in 15 or 20 minutes. You're going to be holding on. Uh, to get right, ready for the ride, but he's going to give you richly from the Word of God. And as he was sharing, he was sharing that um, he started out looking at the tree of life in the Garden of Eden, and he kept, kept following it all the way through to the Old Testament. And he was talking about how the Brother David, God is designed for us to eat at a spiritual tree, this tree of life. When God breathed into man, he breathed into him life, and he breathed into him spiritual life, and to sustain that life, he was going to just eat at the tree of, uh, of life. But when he was left from the garden, he was able to eat of that tree any longer. He had to eat other things, and God uh, sent his son then, Jesus Christ, uh, to to be that propitiation from sin that we can eat of him and we are we are the uh, the, the branches he's the vine we're to partake of him and he was talking about even he was burdened he was talking about the need not to compartmentalize Jesus on Sunday and leave him there and go out and worry about your job and achieving and gaining and education and family and uh, entertainment, all those things. I'm not naming them specifically, but saying that it is necessary for us to eat of the tree of life every day of our life that we will be sustained. And we need that. We need that. And the church is missing that. We've become more and more a culture of having God on Sunday morning and then we stick Him back into that compartment and we go about what we need to do and then we pull Him out next Sunday morning and, and we're dying spiritually because of that. You're right, Brother David. It, 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 when, when Pentecost began, there were weeks of revival. I remember even in my own life as a, a boy in my church having revival that lasted six or eight weeks. Brother Seville says it's to have revival that last a week because he wonders if it They'll overdo people. You know, we're missing it. We're compartmentalizing. God help us that we eat of the tree of life every day. The Word of God, place of prayer. Uh, you know, and, and, and you know, we. I'm not saying someone's not saved if if if, if they're. It, you know, they don't come to church every service. Uh, but but my concern is that if we're really hungry for God, we'll be there every service. And uh, if, if you're in the Word of God, you find a place of prayer daily. I'm not saying you're not saved if you don't. But why wouldn't you want to? Amen. Just being at that place. Amen. Wow. And I'll tell you, I'm concerned. Uh, just because we need the richness. And Brother Clayton said to Brother Eli, <coughs> Tongues and church. He said, Many churches I go to, you don't hear, most churches, you don't hear tongues. He said, I'm concerned. He said, I'm 78 years old. He said, Wow, I never knew he was that old, to be honest. He doesn't look it. And he said, I'm going back. If you remember right, he contracted malaria last year or the year before last. I forget now. And he's going back to the same place in Africa where I contracted it. 
His brother-in-law said to him when he was sick and very sick, he said, have you learned your lesson yet? He said, no, I haven't. I'm going back to these people. And I'm so excited he's coming at the end of June. But I just want to say, I'm burdened too. Where are we as a church? Where are we as individuals in a place of prayer and seeking God and hungry for God? Amen. May our hunger give to others. I'm going to look at this in somewhat of an honor to mothers, but I'm looking at it as to our church and to bring us to a place of prayer. I think I shared the story before, but there was a man, his name was Peter Reichley. Peter Reichley was on the ocean. He left home many years beforehand, had not seen his family. And so, and for kind of roaming, doing his own thing, and, and, and Brother Dennis, this almost sounds crazy to tell, but it is true. Brother Craig, he was on a ship and it went down. Another ship came by and picked him up. It went down. He was on a third ship that picked him up and it went down. A fourth ship picked him up on the ocean. And uh, you know what the story is, don't you? The fourth ship is down. And there he is on a piece of debris, Sister Beth, and he's floating along and wondering what is the likelihood of being picked up, Brother Walt, by another ship. And so, lo and behold, Brother David, there out in the middle of nowhere where there's no uh, a line of sea land in sight, he looks and there's a ship and they come by and they pick him up. Several people on the ship and there's a dock on the ship and, and he brings Peter Reichley on the ship and, and he examines him and he finds it that he's fine, that he's fit, that there's nothing wrong with him. And uh, uh, he provides him some nourishment and gives him some warm clothes and some care. And he said, I need to ask you a favor. He said, uh, uh, on this ship there is a lady who is very, very, very sick and she's going to die. And uh, I, I, the only thing that she wants is to see her son before she dies. Can you just, because everybody on the ship is known to her, could you just pretend to be her son so that she could get that final wish of her life that she would see her son before she dies? They took her to, 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 to the cabin where this woman was laying and she was dying. And, 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 and uh, there she heard this lady crying out, Oh God, please just let me see my son one more time before I die. The doctor went in with Peter Reichley and immediately Peter Reichley fell to the ground and he started crying, tears running down his face as he cried as he walked in this room. And the doctor didn't quite understand. He, he said uh, to, to the doctor, he said, Doctor, this is my mom who I've not seen for 10 years. But the cry of a praying mother was, God, let me see my son one more time before I die. There is power in prayer tonight. Amen. There's power when people pray. Amen. I, I want to tell you tonight, never, never, never underestimate the power of a praying mother. Never underestimate the power of a praying father. Never underestimate the power of a praying grandparent. Never underestimate the power of a praying child of God. Amen. God works and God moves through the power of prayer. It wasn't long until uh, Mrs. Rackley, there she was with a fever, her son sitting beside her. That fever subsided and she was healed. She was cured. She saw her son. The power of prayer. Amen. Amen. It works. It works. Amen. Acts chapter number 12. Verse number 11. 12. The Bible says, and when Peter was come to himself, he said, Now I know of certainty that the Lord has sent an angel and hath delivered me out of the hand of Herod and from, the, uh, from, from all of the expectation of the people of the Jews. And when he had considered this thing, he came to the house of Mary. Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark where many were gathered together praying. Oh, Amen. 
he knew of certainty that God had answered prayer. And when he come to himself, the Bible says that he comes by the cray to a place of a woman named Mary. Amen. Mary, the mother of John, whose surname is Mark. We know John Mark from Scripture, Brother Doug. Amen. Here is this woman, Mary. I, I want to tell you that if there's ever a welcoming mat of any home, amen, it is a welcoming mat of prayer. So here it is that we find that 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 this woman who is John Mark's mother, but that's we don't know a lot about her, but we do know that she was a praying woman. So moms, I want to say to you tonight, amen, never underestimate the power of prayer. God created women in a very special way, he created Eve. Yes, she is the weaker, weaker vessel, amen, that's the way that God created her. But I want you to know that she was the woman, amen, that she rocked the cradle of human life as she rocked her first baby, amen. And this, uh, 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 Eve being the mother, amen. Amen. We find that women are the ones that maybe rock the cradle, but they are the ones that change the future. The power of prayer. And so here it is that we look at, 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 at this woman, Mary. Amen. There are six Marys found in Scripture. We think about Mary, the mother of Jesus. Amen. We think about Mary Magdalene, who in a magnificent way, God delivered her, her worship, her praise. We think about Mary, the mother of Jesus, and who she is. Uh, this Mary isn't quite as, as in there with all the latest and the greatest and the bells and the whistle. But let me tell you, when someone needs an answer, this woman is on the scene, Brother David. Mary, the mother of John Mark. And here was Simon Peter, this chief apostle. So he's thrown into prison by Herod. Amen. And he needs someone to pray. Someone to get a hold of God. And here it is that in the house of Mary. Amen. A John Mark's mother. Amen. There was some prayer going on, Brother Dennis. And, and we find that Peter was delivered. And he knew with certainty that someone had prayed. Who was it? It was Mary. It was Mary gathering our people together. I wonder how many people out there need to know with certainty that someone is praying for them. Amen. Someone is praying. In our culture, we like to do things to make folks feel welcome, don't we? We like to put wreaths on the front door. Some of you will have a nice mat in your porch. Amen. You walk into a house. Ladies, you can you can deck it and decorate it and make it look good and bring everything together to make it feel welcoming. But I want you to know the greatest thing that you can do as a welcome is have a mat of prayer. No greater, no greater welcoming mat than a place of prayer that makes folks feel welcome. Amen. There's nothing greater we can do in this church. Amen. Then make this a place of prayer. That people feel the presence and the power of God. I'm not looking for fancy singing. I'm not looking for eloquent words. Amen. I am looking for the power of God to move. Brother David, you almost took this from me when I was going to say tonight. We can rely upon organ, uh, uh, organization, but when we're done, we have organization. We can rely upon education, but when we're done, we have education. We can rely upon eloquence, but when we're done, all we have is eloquence. We can rely upon entertainment, but when we're done, all we have is entertainment. But when we rely upon the power of prayer, amen, the result is far greater, amen, because the power of prayer yields the will of God in our lives and through our lives. So let's forget about the education. Amen. Let's forget about the eloquence. Let's forget about the entertainment. Let's forget about all those other elements. And let's rely upon prayer because it brings to pass the very will of God. Amen. It was God's will for Peter to be delivered. It was God's will for, for the angel to make a way. Amen. For Peter. And you know what made it happen? Some people who were praying. Amen. Prayer will change things. Amen. You know what I believe keeps people, amen, uh, uh, family members from sin. You know what I believe keeps family members from harm and danger is when people pray. You probably heard the story before of the man who was in the war. Amen. 
and they needed someone to go and do a risky task. There are many beforehand that had done it, but they fell to death in battle. But one man said, I will rise up and volunteer for the occasion, but it has to be at 2 o'clock when I do it. And so the, the time ticked by soon before you know it. 2 o'clock came and that young man got up and he ran and accomplished the mission. His superior said to him, why did it need to be at 2 o'clock? He said, because before I left home, my mom told me, son, I want you to know that every day at 2 o'clock, I will bend my knee and I will be in prayer for you. Amen. Prayer changes things. Do you believe it changes things? It changes lives. It changes circumstances. It changes family infrastructure. Amen. It changes family circumstances that seem impossible. Prayer works tonight. Amen. You know, there are a lot of things that hinder prayer. We live in an hour. You know, when I was growing up, I was having this conversation with my wife this week. I don't want anyone to lose out with me. But when I was growing up, you know, uh, television was preached against regularly when I was growing up. And uh, I'll tell you the change, the biggest change that probably happened in our house is when the television broke and my mom said, no more TV back in this house. My dad agreed. Amen. It changed our lives. Uh, I believe on a spiritual level. Amen. It definitely changed us. But it changed our, 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 our education, the way that we studied, the way that we performed. It changed the way things were done around our house. Uh, so, so when I look back, uh, but I look at today, and I'm not saying, I, I'm not here, uh, I, I can preach against something, dirt, but, but it's way beyond that. We now hold it in our hand. But it's a hindrance to our prayer lives. It's a hindrance to a lot of things where God wants to work. And I'm not saying that, that, that those little electronic devices are wrong in themselves. But I'm saying they become a hindrance on a very large scale. If we're not careful, it hinders our prayer. It hinders our Bible reading. It hinders our witnessing. It hinders our meditating upon God. It hinders us working together as a family. Even working together as a church. God help us. There are some other things from Scripture. You know, we live in, I believe we live in one of the greatest times. You know, we have so much. We have so many resources. Brother David, we have so much that we can do and enjoy. But let's not put those things in front of really praying Amen. and seeking God. <clears throat> Amen. I'm not saying they're sad. I'm saying, but when they come in between us and God, it comes between the real move of God and God working in our life. Let's set it aside. I'm not even going to try to name specifics because you know what? The specifics are probably different for every one of us. But I do know this. Brother Justin, you said in Sunday school this morning, one of the things that we need to do is we need to examine our lives. Is something being hindered in our prayer life? Is results not happening because of us? The Bible says that we are to confess our sins. And so I'm asking God to look and see if there's things that have crept in unaware. The Bible says it's the little foxes. The little things that spoil the vines. So are there things in our life? And if there are, we need to confess them. I love what Luke says. You know, in our lives, sometimes we don't realize that we just simply need to be more generous. In Luke chapter number 6, verse number 38, he said, Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and, and, and running over. Shall men give unto your bosom for the same measure that you meet with all. It shall be measured unto you. Are we looking for God to work and move in our lives, but yet we shut up our bowels of compassion and our bowels of resources of things that we have. Amen. If we want to see God give to us, then we need to be giving out to others. Practice forgiveness. Are those the things that are hindering us that we don't forgive others? In Matthew chapter number 6, verse number 15, the Word of God says, but if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive 
you your trespasses. Amen. We've got to forgive. We've got to seek God regularly, putting our hand to the plow and not looking back, pressing in, trusting God. Amen. We need to practice praying for others. Amen. James tells us to pray for one another. Amen. It is our God-given responsibility. He said uh, this in James chapter number 4, verse number 3, uh, Ye ask and receive not because you ask amiss. Or that you may consume it upon your own lust. God help us not to pray for us and, and what we want, but to pray for others and the well being and the converting of souls and the moving of the Holy Ghost in us and others. God help us. We definitely have to make room for prayer. Let me ask you this Is there a secret place in your home and in your life where you pray? Mary's house was a place of prayer. What is our home known as? Oh, that's the home where they have all the latest gadgets. Oh, that's the home that's magazine worthy. It's beautiful. That's the home with all the antiques. That's the home with, 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 with all the entertainment. That's the home where all the good food is. Where is it? That's the home where they practice the presence of God. And what prayer happens. Mary's home is a, a place of prayer. There was a young girl who was dying. She knew she was dying. And as she was dying, she said to her pastor, she said, Pastor, what is there for me to do? I want to do something for God, but I can't get to church. I can't do the things I don't want. He said, I want you to make a list of people in this town who need to be saved. I want you to pray for them to get saved. She made a list of 56 people. She began to pray, and all of a sudden, revival began to happen in the church because she set her energies, her mind, her spirit to pray. Brother David, the day that she died, they went into her home. They found a prayer on this sister Tina. 56 people were checked out. They got saved because she prayed. I feel like tonight the thing that's going to make a difference is that we need to pray. We need to pray. I want you to imagine this. There was a praying woman that her son went on a mission trip with Uncle Barnabas and the Apostle Paul. Somewhere on his trip with a Craig, he began to get homesick. That happens, Brother Wally. People can get homesick. That's not sin. That's not wrong. That's his life. Very homesick. And so they came back. And you know what? The Apostle Paul got pretty aggravated with him. What's going to happen, Brother Eli? Brother David? I imagine after that, for John Mark, there was a steep valley because he had let down Uncle Barnabas. He let down the Apostle Paul. He maybe even let down himself, Brother Dennis. The devil jumped all over that, I'm sure. And he may have tried to hinder, but I'm going to tell you something. There was a praying mama behind John Mark. And though there was a sea that he was sailing on that was difficult, Though that there maybe was a steep valley that he was down in. Amen. There came a day that because of the praying of his mama. Amen. The praying of a woman named Mary. Obsolete to a lot of folks. Not known as Mary Magdalene. Not known to, as Mary the mother of Jesus. Uh, not known as Mary the, 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 the sister of Elijah. But Mary the praying woman. Amen. That her home was steeped in prayer. Praying for her son. And there came a day where where, where, where a, a Paul, he called on John Mark because he was worthy. Amen. All because a mother prayed. I want to tell you something. We can give up on folks. I'm not here to discourage folks that, that struggle with their attendance to church. Amen. I want to encourage them. I want to pray for them. I want them back in church faithful. Amen. The enemy already jumps all over it and discourages them. I want to encourage them. But I want to pray for them. Amen. 
Amen. There may be a wayward son. There may be a wayward daughter. Amen. There may be a wayward spouse. There may be a wayward family member. Amen. There may be some situations that we don't like. But I want to tell you what the greatest thing that we can do is pray. Is pray. I believe it made a difference in Peter's life. But I believe it made a difference in the life of the son. We need to pray. It makes a difference. Tonight, we're going to do it this way. I'm going to open these altars up. There's no formal dismissal. Amen. I just want to say, we need to pray. We need to pray. If you want to walk the aisle to pray, you want to kneel and pray, you want to lay and pray, I don't care how you pray. But tonight, I believe in that to merit the Bible church needs to be a welcoming mat of prayer. I believe in that to our homes need to be a welcoming mat to every family member and person that comes in. It's a mat of prayer. I think the thing that makes a difference in the lives of others is someone to pray. Mothers, this is Mother's Day. Amen. It's you. Do you know that there was a lady, let me just close with this, moms, listen to me. There was a lady who had 19 kids. Bless her heart. Bless her heart, little David, 19 kids. Any of you feel like you'd like to give a competition? I don't feel up to it right now. But do you know that that lady was a praying lady? And on her lap, she wrote two boys named Charles and John. They brought their Bible. The Methodist Church is today. Many in here, hey, I am Pentecost today because of, of what Charles and John Weston did. It all started there. But it made a difference. Listen to this. Some women were talking one day and they were talking about when is it that you start teaching your children about Jesus? How do you wonder, Brother Dennis? When is it some people said, oh, when they, when they start talking or when they start walking or when they go to school and all of a sudden the mom said, no. You're way off the mark. It starts 20 years earlier with a mom who's raised in love. The difference in this generation is going to be us in our prayer. It makes a difference for our children, for our grandchildren. It makes a difference for everyone around us. We've got to pray. Listen, we don't have anybody else's coattails to ride on any longer. We've got to pray and see the hand of God. Let's gather and find a place of prayer tonight.